Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Last week, Meta released their latest large language model, the Llama 3. And I want to show you how I integrated Llama 3 into my AI avatar project. So stick around and I'll show you how. So if you haven't watched any of my previous videos regarding this AI avatar project, check out the description below. So I'm very excited to integrate Llama 3, but just to give everybody a, some context, what is Llama 3? Well, it's an AI large language model developed by Meta AI. And uh, it has two versions. One is the 8 billion and the other one is 70 billion parameter. Um, so depending on how powerful your computer is, your system, um, you can run the 8 billion um, or the 70 billion parameter. The 70 billion being, you know, supposed to be much better than the 8 billion uh, model. Now, there are a lot of benefits as to why you want to run your um, own model computer. One will be, you know, for, for development and customization, if you want to train it with more data, but your own data, uh, you could do that. Uh, you could even, it's also for privacy. Um, so you, you just hold your own data. Uh, there are also some, you know, you got control and, uh, you know, some more performance and reliability, I guess. Um, Cause sometimes like OpenAI, uh, it, it, it kind of like goes offline or something, or, you know, sometimes I can't connect to it. Uh, but for me, the main, the main benefit is really right now costs. Um, I've been running my project using OpenAI's uh, GPT API, and over time, it does cost money to uh, continue to run it and test uh, using it. Um, so, you know, I'm really happy that I'm able to do this because I've eliminated one part of that cost uh, into into uh, implementing my this project, uh, and so running the uh, the Llama three a local model, uh, you know, will just save me some money. Uh, so I, I want to show you how I did it. So the first thing that we need to do is Google Node Llama CPP, and it should give you the one of the top results in the search. And uh, after you do that, it will take you to the GitHub page. Now, the nice thing about this project is it's very well documented. It has this getting started guide, the API references, and, and you know some more help. It's actively being developed. The last version is 2.8.9, which was released March 21st. And it's very easy to, uh, to implement. Um, so what I, you know, the easiest way to do it is like if you click on the getting started guide and it will give you the installation instructions so you need, just need to run this npm command what that does is installs that package into your project and if you go to your package.json file you'll see that no llama cpp uh, with that current version uh, will show up in there uh, in, in the diff um, and so after that, you're ready to implement it. So for me, I created this llama.js, llamaapi.js, and uh, obviously you could call it whatever you like. And so uh, I created it as a class with a constructor. One of the parameters is the model path. The model path really is just the um, location of where you save the the uh, the model locally. The ex the file extension is a GGUF, and you could get these models uh, from different sources. Uh, but reliably, you, you you could get them at Hugging Face. Um, and so af after you set that path, the next thing that you need to do is is just create a, a new instance, so new Llama model, and uh, you could pass in that model path. Now in this video, you'll see that I have this GPU layers. Uh, 
it's because I've enabled CUDA support, but it also runs on um, just using CPU. But I'll tell you about the about the, the, the CUDA support a little bit later. Uh, so after you, you, you created the model, the next thing is you have to create the context. And so this is pretty straightforward. You just go llama context and you pass in the model and then you created a session. You want the llama chat session uh, if you're doing this some sort of a, you know, chat bot uh, experience. And so, you know, the parameter there is like you just pass the context which you created in, uh, before that. Um, and so that's done. You know, if, if you just want to use it um, in your own project, just do, doing like a, a simple chat bot, this is all you need to do. Uh, now for me, um, I have this uh, get response uh, function that, that I created. And uh, what it does is, uh, this is like the, the, the stream version, there are two versions, the non-stream version and the stream version. The non-stream version, what that thing does is it waits for the whole response to be completed before sending it back to you. Um, the stream version, um, what it does is it, it sends everything in chunks. And so, um, you know, it gives you this feeling of, of it running um, quicker because you'll get the response much quicker before even trying to, you know, get to the end. Like imagine that if you have, um, you know, 200 words of a response. And if you wait for that, it's gonna take a while, but it kind of gives you in chunks, like, you know, every 10 words or something like that, um, the response will be faster and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, to read or, or hear the, the response faster. Um, so that's what all this function does for me. Now, uh, uh, regarding this uh, session.prompt, uh, which is pretty much the, the you know, the, the, the function to, to, to give you the answer. You could pass in additional parameters to it, like temperature, max tokens, top P, um, and some there are some other parameters uh, that are available if you look at the documentation. Um, temperature just means that, um, how creative do you want the model to be when it gives you the answer? Zero being like, no, not, not very creative or not creative at all. Uh, and it will just kind of like, you know, give you the same response every single time for the same exact question. Uh, if you increase the temperature a little bit by 0 0.5, 0 0.6, uh, 0.8, you know, it's, it kind of, kind of gives you a little bit more variety on how it answers that question. Max tokens, um, it's just like how much, how many tokens do you want it to reply at a maximum? Uh, I think for Llama 3, they count the tokens as like one word is a token. So this could be like, imagine like 256, 256 words for the, that question that you asked, which is a lot already, right? Um, anyway, you could take a look at all of these optional parameters. Uh, so you could customize it the way you want. And then the, the rest of the code here really is just for me parsing the, uh, the response. In, in, into the style that I like. You don't have to do any of that. Uh, you could see that this function called this.context.decode chunk. That's all you need. That converts the, uh, um, the token into string. Going back to the uh, GPU layers, uh, if you want to have CUDA support, and it's, I highly recommend it. it it's just, um, the, the, the main benefit that I've seen it is obviously speed. Um, when I was running the, the 7B model on just a CPU, the, the very first time that it, it, when it loads the model, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, um, I think when I clocked it, it was between four and six minutes. Um, for the very first um, uh, response to to come out, but then after that, since everything there's already uh, you, you know it's already cached in memory and all that stuff, then at that point when you ask it a question, it, it's it, it's pretty quick. You know? um, and then the second one is I although I installed Visual Studio before, um, I didn't realize that you know I didn't have that uh, desktop deployment for C++. And so 
it wasn't until I I saw that as an error where I'm like I had to install it but then, then after you install that um, and then there's this other problem where it couldn't find some files and so I'll, I'll, I'll show you that uh, description also um, of, of the solutions very simple you're just copying some files and moving them over to another location well not moving copying them to a different location I didn't try to move them and then after that you know I just have to rerun uh, the command and um, you know I was able to install the, the, the enable the CUDA support for it um, and then from then on just running it is is just way better uh, and uh, that's about it uh, that's all I did to uh, integrate this llama CPP um, into my AI avatar project um, at the end of this video I'm going to show you some samples and how it performs um, and then I'll probably make another video uh, just to compare um, uh, running it with llama 3 and the uh, the GPT API um, that I used before uh, till then thanks for watching peace Hi, how can I help you? Who are the actors who played Batman? That's an easy one. The actors who played Batman are Michael Keaton, 1989 to 1992 Val Kilmer, 1995 George Clooney, 1997. Christian Bale, 2005 to 2012. Ben Affleck, 2016 to 2017. Robert Pattinson, 2022 present. I'm only considering the live action movies and TV shows, not animated or voiceover roles. Who's the most famous? According to various sources, including box office results and popularity polls, Christian Bale is often considered the most famous Batman actor. He played the role in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Trilogy, 2005 to 2012, which received widespread critical acclaim and commercial success. However, based on general recognition and cultural impact, Christian Bale is often regarded as one of the most well-known Batman actors. Who's the least favorite? This one's a bit more subjective. While opinions about the actor's performances can vary, Val Kilmer, 1995, is often considered the least favorite Batman actor among fans and critics. His portrayal in Batman forever received mixed reviews, with some finding his acting style not fitting well with the character. Thank you. You're welcome. It was my pleasure to help you with your Batman related questions. If you have any more, feel free to ask.